Hi, welcome to Video Doctor. And in this video, we are going to see the complete overview of DaVinci Resolve Micro Color Panel. So now I have this project over here, and I have the Micro Color Panel, which is set in front of you. You can see. So this is your lift, gamma, and gain. So three are there. And on the right side, you have your uh, transport controls and everything. And on the left side, you have a lot of tools to do your color grading. So we'll see that one by one. So to begin with, I'm just switching over to my primary wheels over here in the software. So you can see when I turn the lift wheel, you can see the lift is working and the gamma is working and then the gain is working. So now we have this offset. So if you want to play around with offset, you can hit offset over here. And then this right wheel becomes the offset wheel. So you can do your adjustments in the offset wheel. So you can do all your corrections and everything over here. So uh, when this is an offset mode, this becomes your uh, uh, temperature that you can increase your temperature and decrease when you when your offset is pressed. And this becomes your tint. So you can see that the tint is working, right? But these two balls are empty. It, it doesn't work. Okay. So again, you can press offset to remove it. And now this becomes lift, gamma, and gain. So uh, I'll just reset this right now. Reset. And now you can see the lift. If when you're doing your lift correction, you can see your scopes. I can do my increasing in the highlights and this is the midtones and whatever corrections you do you can do your corrections basic corrections over here but if you want to reset these corrections you have lift comma gain here reset lift comma and gain so you can press reset lift only the lift this portion will be removed all color and as well as the luminance value this wheel and this will be automatically reset so reset gamma again when you turn your gamma wheel and your color it will reset both the things so reset gain and it will reset both the uh, wheel and the wheel and the luminance wheel. Uh, there is a special tool in this panel which in this budget is very good, I feel. So this is about this two shift up and shift down buttons over here. So what it does is, for example, I'll just reset. Uh, I'm doing a correction over here. So I'm just doing a correction and I, I, I'm adding a color. Let's say I just want to reset my levels. So I can press the shift up button and hit reset lift. So what it will do is it will just reset the color alone and keep your data, the, the wheel data, the luminance data, the same. It, it doesn't affect the only the uh, wheel is uh, getting reset or the color is getting reset. So if you do the shift down and press the reset lift, it will reset the uh, luminance value also. So shift up and shift down works for all the uh, uh, tools in the panel. So that is a different video. We'll see that in another video, but let's continue with this panel. And first thing being first, in the left side corner, you have these tools over here. So this is quite common. It, it's there in micro and mini panels of Blackmagic Design. So these are new tools in the left side. So First thing is auto color button. So if someone is an editor and uh, he wants to uh, do an immediate auto color, you can just hit auto color and boom, your uh, coloring is done. I mean, you can see the screen, the color is done. And then you can go ahead and adjust a little bit of uh, your uh, brightness and then shadows and then even things out with the gamma. So all those things you can do. And again, auto is basically, it will do your white balance and your contrast level. So to understand this, Clearly, I have a uh, uh, different color uh, uh, footage here, so you can see the difference. So I'm just jumping to the next clip from here. I'm just showing next clip and next clip. Now you can see this clip is totally out of white balance. It's too warm, the white is not white. All those things are there. So I'm just going to hit auto color. You can see immediately everything is true to color now to its original state. White is white, the road is in a road color, yellow is yellow. So I can see this, uh, I can disable our bypass. This is before and this is after. So this is just a one uh, click of a button that is auto color and the job is done. So that's pretty amazing about the auto color. So we have seen the offset. Next is copy and paste. So basically uh, we can copy a grade, keep it in our memory and paste it to our next uh, clip or next uh, uh, node. For example, let's say, I'm adding a new node, so I can add a new node over here. I'm adding a new node and I'm doing a basic correction, uh, a little bit of contrast, uh, a little bit of 
uh, glue tone to this frame. So uh, let's say this is my grade. I can copy this and go to the next clip and I can just simply paste this and whatever color is there, it will automatically get pasted. How much ever you can do, you can copy and paste stuff like this very easy. So this is copy and paste. Then you know undo and redo. So undo, redo. So this undo and redo works as clip by clip. So now uh, it's not a chronological order, one to hundred, it's not like that. For every clip, it resets. So now uh, we have done, I, I'm adding another node and I'm doing some corrections, all those things. But if I go to my previous clip and do undo, so whatever we have done, the latest on that particular clip will get undone. If you go to the next clip, that grade is all, all, already there. So the undo and redo is not for the entire software, but just for that one particular clip. So that is pretty amazing, I would say. And it's it's it works without panel also. Fine. Press the shift down and hit reset. It will reset the entire node graph. Otherwise, it will just reset that particular uh, node. So I'm just adding one. This is one node, auto color. Let me add another node. This is my basic balance and everything. And I'm adding another node. This is my color. So I just want to, uh, for example, I just want to uh, delete the grade in the third node. So I can just hit reset and it will get resetted. What if I want to reset the entire grade for this particular clip? So shift down and hit reset the entire clip's color will be gone. So the next thing is uh, bypass. So bypass, you know uh, where to find it. So I'm just going to next clip. I'm just going to hit auto color and I'm going to see bypass. This is before, this is after. So bypass is just removing the color and showing it for you. And this one is disable. So disable is basically for each and every clip based. I mean, okay, disable is actually, it can be applicable for each and every node. So I'm adding multiple nodes. So uh, I'm adding a little bit of contrast. This is too much of warm. I just want to change the color, all those things. And let's say I want to disable only that particular second node. So I can hit disable. That particular node alone will get disabled automatically. So that's the uh, beauty of it. So this is disable. So then uh, this is your loop on and off. And this is your user mode. Uh, this right now it's empty, I think. So this is empty. So we'll keep it that way. And uh, at the top, at the top, you have this Y lift comma and gain. So this is your Y wheel. You can see the lift Y wheel is getting automatically adjusted with this Y lift. And this is your Y gamma. Y means in the gamma and in the uh, white part of the region. And then your Y gain is there. And then your this is your contrast. You can see your contrast. So whatever is there in the primary wheels from the top uh, temperature, tint, contrast, and pivot, all those things are there over here also. So then midpoint details, uh, then color boost, then shadows, you, you, can, you need to do with shadows, then highlights, you need to deal with highlights, saturation, hue, and warmix. So the base, these basic tools, uh, which are there in the primary wheels at the top as a slider is available as a rollable thing right here. And this part you, can, you are seeing here is just basically for an iPad. You can place an iPad and uh, uh, everything is done. So next is, this is your transportation control. So okay. so you can grab a still from here. And uh, this is your still uh, gallery modification. You can go to the previous still, next still, uh, all those things in the first frame. And this is your, uh, you can add keyframes and you can go left and right with your keyframes. So I'll show you that as well. And this is your previous node, the left node. This is basically your transportation moving without touching your mouse. And then you can go with previous frame, frame by frame movement. You can go here and previous clip, next clip. This is your play, reverse, stop. All these transportation controls are over here. And this uh, previous key frame, next key frame, I'll just come to that. So for that, I'm just going to my keyframe editor over here. And I'm just coming back a little bit, just taking it pause. And uh, we have uh, add keyframe over here in the right side corner. I'm just adding a keyframe, doing a basic correction, and just uh, going to the next different frames. And again, adding a keyframe over here. It adds a dynamic keyframe. I'm just brightening a little bit and changing it to a little bit greenish. So it works like this. You can see there is a basic animation going on over there. So I can go frame by frame. So it's very dark and it turns a little bit brighter. So likewise, you can add multiple keyframes. Let me take you to another uh, point. 
and I'm adding another keyframe. I'm making it more brighter and blacks. I can making it more darker, something like this. And this also is recorded. So I can come to my previous uh, shot. I can see these all things are getting recorded. So let's say if I want to go to the next keyframe, change certain things, go to the next keyframe and change certain things, I can do that. So here a lot of things are burnt. So I'm going to bring it down a little bit. So to keep it normal, so I can go to the next keyframe as well and do some basic changes which will not break my image. Uh, I can bring down my saturation as well from here. Right. So all those things you can do and it is an animated form right now. All right. So this is about previous and next keyframe. And here you have add node and add a, a window. Uh, and you can do those corrections. So I will come to that later in this video. Right now, I'm just going to reset this. And over here, you can uh, grab a still. You can play a still. Maybe I'll go to the next clip for you to see. You can play a still. And you can uh, just keep on playing. Or you can use your shift up and hit play button. You will go to a, a, a version versioning mode. So you can wipe a still in a different format with playing a shift up. And you can use the different methods of wiping. So that's quite good in your uh, wipe up mode. So I'm just going to match two clips over here. So this is good. I'm going to hit auto color and I'm going to match this previous frame, uh, previous clip in this point. Again, I'm going to hit auto color. So this looks more bluish. This is a little bit warmish. So what I'm going to do, I want to match this uh, frame to this one. Okay, so first thing is I'm going to grab a still and come to my previous clip and I'm going to play the still and I can move between different white methods. So for me, I think this is better. So left and right comparison, this is more bluish. This is more warmish. So I can also get to the scopes to adjust it. So we can see this RGB palette over here. So I can start adjusting it. I'm going to add another node. So I'm going to start adjusting this particular uh, uh, frame. You can see in the node itself, left and right is there. So in the highlights, a little bit of greenish is required. Green and blue. Mid-tones, a little bit of green to be added. A little bit of uh, primary colors over here to manage it. A little bit of blue and a little bit of uh, red in the area. So all those things. It's fine. So I can also bring a little bit out to match the contrast of the scene. And then I can simply add a little bit of uh, white balance over here. So to add white balance, you can hit offset and you can add a little bit of white balance to the image. I can match this frame. So now this is matched. This is more or less the same, like a little bit of matched and uh, this is, you can see by hitting bypass, this is before and this is after. And I'll remove this place tool. So this is before, this is after grading. I can go to the next clip. This is before and this is after. So now it is almost matched. A little bit of more matching is required. I'm just explaining the tools. All those things are there. So that is how uh, we can do, use this place tool. And the next thing is, uh, I'm coming to the last clip over here. So I'm just hitting a play button. Okay, so this is your cursor. Uh, you can select certain things from here. That is really good for this budget by, uh, price point. I'm going to hit cursor. So this wheel becomes your cursor right now. You can hit whatever colors you want. And I'm just going to select the cursor. And what you have selected, you can see the highlight. So I, you can just select and drag. Maybe shift up and select. I can use my mouse for a little bit of nasty. So basic things are okay. So now uh, I can change the color of this. Very simple. Uh, you can remove the highlight now. Like, this is too much of green. So I don't want green. I'm going to change the color of this. Yeah. 
So I'm changing the color of the ocean right now. So more of more towards bluish. Or you can just I'm just re resetting all these things, and I can use my hue here and change the hue to blue or something like this. I can change it. So I can keep on adding node and doing it. So this is what this highlight will show you what has been selected. Again, your shift up button will automatically cycle through different highlighting options and all those things. And uh, you have viewer. So full screen viewer can be seen. And again, shift up and viewer. You can remove this uh, clips at the bottom. And again, shift down and uh, uh, viewer will bring up the light box. It's quite amazing. And then the select button is there for the cursor. So that's really good. And another one more thing I wanted to show you, and this is almost we have covered everything, but I wanted to show one thing over here. So let's say I'm adding a, a window over here. And after adding a window, so this wheels with the shift up. So it becomes your softening tool. You can change the rotation. And this one, your right side can be your zoom. And with the shift down, uh, with the shift up again, these are for the wheels. Okay, so this for softening, this for uh, bringing the size up. The balls also plays a major role. So the, the lift ball doesn't do anything. The uh, mid-tone ball actually does deals with the aspect ratio. And the uh, right side, I mean the gain ball deals with moving the window over here. So let's say if we want to cover only the Lufthana. So I can just simply uh, bring the size down and use this cursor to place it over here, all by placing my shift key. Again, press, bring the size down over here. I can place my viewer here, and I can soften this up to how much ever efforts I want. So I can, I'm softening this up, and I can use my highlight and see what I have selected. So this is pretty great. And likewise, the shift up key and shift down key has a lot and a lot of tools uh, to uh, engage and explore so that we will see that in an another video and if you like this video please do subscribe share and comment on video doctor and we are coming up with a new DaVinci Resolve course as well it's free of cost we cover the entire course structure so it, it, it it's not like a clip by clip or video by video based it will start from the media importing managing editing then color then uh, uh, VFX, then audio, and then final deliverable. So all those things, we are coming up with the course. So please do subscribe us. And let us know if you have any questions regarding my tow color panel.